working from the 90-90 position, which is pretty much a crucial element in developing hip mobility and be able to have fluid hips that have great optimal range of motion and ability to use the hips, not just a passive stretch that okay might make you move a little more, but something that's gonna actually allow you to control, have better neuromuscular control, better neural control, allowing you to make your hips work in a way that you're asking them to do. And they move for the demand of the sport or whatever it is that you like to do. So 90-90 is kind of like a uh, pigeon stretch. We're here. We have 90 degree angles on both legs. And lifting our back foot onto the block here. Palm open here, not closed. That closes the shoulder off. This opens us up in this line. We're propped here. You feel a little light stretch here in the front of the hip. This is putting our hip in internal rotation. We then think about pushing our foot down onto the block as if we're mashing it. As if we're mashing it into the ground, you're going to feel a little engagement, obviously in your oblique because you're shortened here. But you're going to feel this in the back part of the hip and that glute medius here. And you're mashing for 10 to 15 seconds. And then just breathing calmly. And then from there, we're alternating that with we're trying to lift it. These are called pales and rails in FRC, functional range conditioning language. So you're trying to lift, the foot may not come off, but as long as you're engaging that, we're really grooving our internal rotation here. And again, we'll mash down. So our leg is in an internally rotated spot, but when we're mashing down, we're moving into external rotation. Due to these forces at end range allows our body to understand and comprehend and download more range of motion into the joint. And then we try to lift up again. Lift, lift, lift. You notice each time you're going to feel a little bit more range of motion, a little more active control. Breathing, keeping that everything stable, pelvis stable. Let's switch sides now. You'll notice a different side to side. Like this is the side I need to work actually a little more. I need a little more opening on this front leg. And you can do this at night when you're watching TV. So we're mashing down, again, open, We've got space between our shoulder and our ear. Breathe through that low belly. Mashing, mashing, mashing. Then we look to lift it. Okay, that lift is our internal rotation. So we're already at our in range of internal rotation by being propped on the block. By lifting our foot a little bit, we're going into uncharted territory. We're teaching our body, saying, hey, you got a little bit more internal rotation. Let's get it, come on. It's that command center. Then again, we're pushing down working external rotation at the end range of our internal rotation, and you're breathing into it, as always. And you just feel the engagement right in that hip capsule. Try to lift one more time, keeping everything neutral through here, ribs are locked down. Pumping that belly breath, shoulders are locked down. This is instrumental in increasing your hip mobility. There's more series, more with this that I will cover in these future videos. With that, big things are going to happen in your hips. You're going to move more freely, and not only freely, but in a way that you can control the freedom of movement. That is the key. We want freedom, we want movement, but we want that active control, and that's what mobility is all about. Mobility and stability. That's what we're going for. Guys, check below. Got some offerings, got some ebook, got some ebooks, on, got some plans, got some big things that are going down that I'm putting together DVD sets. So check that out below and uh, see what structure fancy because uh, I'm excited to share all this with you. So best wishes, stay mobile, stay stable, stay strong. All the best, peace guys.